friends welcome to a new video today we will be tier ranking all of my recent reads so of course the books i read throughout february and the books i read in december and january it is long overdue <laughs> I did ask you all recently what you preferred if you wanted me to do my typical long-winded wrap-ups or a tier ranking video summarizing the books I read in the last few months. I didn't get around to filming a December or January wrap-up. It's just been so busy and I don't know where the time is flying but it's, it's flying somewhere and it's going by way too fast. So I had asked you all what you preferred and more than half of you suggested you would like a tier ranking video. So here we are, we will be tier ranking my recent reads. I will do my absolute best to be very, very brief. Am I ever very, very brief? Not usually, but we'll try because there are, I think over 40 books to talk about. I read a lot in the last few months. I'm very happy about that, but there's just a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. This tier ranking has a bit of a twist to it as each of the categories is a Jane Austen quote. I wanted to do something a little bit different rather than your typical S tier, A, B, C, D. And I'm also honestly a little bit done with the Goodreads numerical rating system. I just, I don't feel it's enough because my thoughts towards books and about books, they're always very nuanced. And I might consider a book a favorite, but objectively, I don't think it really is a five-star read but I loved it so much. And then there are books that I give five stars in the moment, but I don't find them to be as memorable. They just kind of delivered what I wanted in that moment. So I think categorizing books suits my tastes more. That's not to say I won't continue giving numerical ratings and sharing those when I review books, but I do really like the categorization of books a little more than just straight up numerical rating. That's a whole conversation for another day. But like I was saying, they are Jane Austen quotes and I just think it's so much fun. So as you can see, there are five categories. And of course the first one is one of my favorite quotes from Emma. It is, if I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. And these are the top books the best books. I may not have given every single book that ends up in this category five stars on Goodreads. It may have been a four, four and a half. I don't think any four actually, probably just four and a half, but either way, the top tier favorite books, just the best. And then the second one is how quick come the reasons for approving what we like. And this one is really, really good. I really enjoyed the book. Great book. And then the fourth tier is I have not the pleasure of understanding you. So I personally didn't care for the book. Doesn't mean it's a terrible book, but just not for me. And then we have the bottom tier, which is In Vain Have I Struggled. And these are books that I really struggled through. Either I just wasn't in the mood for them or they just weren't great books. I hated them or books that I DNF'd as well. And these would be the permanent DNFs. I won't be talking about any books that I DNF'd temporarily because at some point I do want to come back to them. So those are the five categories and I'm very, very excited to see where all of these books end up. I do want to mention I've also been quietly participating in a couple of readathons. There is February, which I will have all the information for that linked below, but basically it was dedicated to fairy tales and I did read a few fairy tales, technically retellings, but I did read a few books for that readathon as well as Feb Regency. And for Feb Regency, I think I read one or two books. I think one actually and I started a second one that I have not quite finished yet and I just wanted to quickly mention it along with the other books I'm currently reading and have not finished. So I am reading The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. This one is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice but all about Mary Bennett. This one I'm really really enjoying. I just haven't gotten very far so I didn't get a chance to finish this for Feb Regency but I am counting it for the readathon. I'm also in the middle of The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie and I am loving this. I know this one is a lot of people's favorite and I can see why it is really really good. I have been trudging through Bleak House by Dickens and I am really really close to finishing it. It's been a struggle, I'll just say that. <laughs> and I'm also slowly but surely making my way through The Life of Charlotte Bronte by Elizabeth Gaskell. This one I started at the end of 2023. I'm still reading it, that's completely okay. I am enjoying it. It's just a bit of a, I don't know, more challenging read to get through, not because the writing's hard to understand, but I guess I will share more of my thoughts once I've finished it. Okay, so now we're gonna go through all of the books that I read in the last few months and we will be tier ranking them. So like I was saying earlier, 
A five star on Goodreads does not necessarily mean that I considered the book to be an absolute all time favorite, although in the moment I loved it. And then same with a four star read. It could be a four star because it wasn't perfect, but it's still a book that I think about all the time. Even though there were aspects of the book that I didn't love, I loved the book as a whole, if that makes sense. So there's just a lot of nuance in my thoughts <laughs> towards a lot of these books. And that's why I just don't like straight up number ratings. So let's just go ahead and dive in. The first book here is The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. It is part of the Chronicles of Narnia, which I am reading pretty slowly, but loving the series. And this one is really different. Um, I think right off the bat, I, I'm just going to put it here. How quick come the reasons for approving what we like. I really, really did like this one. It's very different than the first two, The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. This one's more of a fantasy story. It's called Political Intrigue, a talking horse named Bree that I loved. It was really cute. I really, really enjoyed it. Didn't know what to expect going in, so it was it was really delightful. I really enjoyed it. The next one is Birds of a Feather by Jacqueline Winspear. It's the second book in the Maisie Dobb series, and it's going to the very top. If I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. I loved this book. I love Maisie as a character. It was just so good. I really, really enjoyed the plot of this one. It has to do with a missing heiress and then there are some mysterious murders that seem to be connected. Maisie is a private investigator and I just love the way she goes about solving these mysteries. I just love this series. I've only read two, but I already know that it's gonna be a series I want to read every book from, so. Definitely top tier. The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax is such a fun book. It's going right at the top of the second tier. And this one is about a woman named Mrs. Polifax who's in her 60s and she ends up being hired by the CIA to be a spy. A lot of the book is just not realistic, but it is so, so fun. It is so much fun. I really don't know what else to say about it other than it's very enjoyable, a perfect read to just escape from reality. I loved it. Honestly, it deserves to be in the top tier. Probably at the bottom of it, but in the top tier for sure. Just wanted to mention these books are not organized in the way that I read them. Just wanted to mention. The next one, Nothing Else But Miracles, I already know is in the second tier. I was just a little bit let down by this one. Not that I didn't like it. I really, really did like it. I loved the siblings. It's another middle grade by this author. Her first book, A Place to Hang the Moon, is one of my favorite books of all time. Adored that book. This one's also set during World War II, like A Place to Hang the Moon but it just was missing something. Although I liked the characters, I think some of the plot elements were lacking for me and I don't know, it was just, it was missing something. The siblings in this one are basically left to fend for themselves as their father's off fighting in the war and so there are just a lot of things that they have to deal with and everything, but it, it was just missing that something special that A Place to Hang the Moon had for me. Still a great book. I still want to read everything that this author ever writes, but just not my favorite. Next we have European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman, and this one started off really strong for me, but throughout the book it kind of went downhill. I'm gonna put this one in the middle. That would, there we go. So this one is the second book in the Athena Club series by Theodora Goss. The first book, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, was so fun. I think I gave that one four stars. This one I didn't like as much. First of all, it was way too long and I actually have the book here. It's huge. It was, I think, 700 pages. And the plot was just the same things recycled, the same things happening over and over again. In the first book, we have five main characters. They are all monstrous in some way, shape, or form. One of them's the daughter of Dr. Jekyll, one's the daughter of Mr. Hyde. We have characters with connections to Dr. Moreau, Frankenstein. It's It's got a lot of those gothic classics kind of interwoven in the story. And we also have Sherlock and Watson. And in the first book, there's this secret society of mad scientists, basically. And the girls are trying to expose them and fight for justice because of the monstrous deeds that they've been doing, that this secret society has been doing. And so that kind of continues on into the second book. We have a girl that's kidnapped and the adventure continues in the second book. But like I was saying, it was just the same thing recycled. The girls kept getting into trouble, getting rescued, getting into trouble, getting rescued over and over. But without much character growth, it was just not organized well. Like the plot was not paced well. And as someone who likes Dracula, I really, really love that classic. I don't like the way that vampirism was interwoven in this book. Just the way that it was done wasn't my favorite. So middle tier, tolerable, good book, just not my absolute favorite. Oh, this next book was just wonderful. That goes right at the top. First book, 
Come on, switch. There we go. In Feast or Famine by Misu Andrews. This is biblical fiction. It's about Asenath, who was the wife of Joseph in the Bible. Misu Andrews is one of my favorite biblical fiction authors, just one of my favorite authors of all time. And this book was wonderful. I loved it so much. And like I was saying, it's about Asenath, who was the wife of Joseph. So we have her perspective. And we also have Joseph's perspective and Asenath's father, who was a priest. That's fictionalized. A lot of the book, it has to be fictionalized because we don't get a lot of information in the Bible. But I love the way that Misu Andrews interweaves truth with fiction. She just, she's perfect <laughs> the way that she does it. This book was a perfect blend of biblical history, romance, and politics without the political side being too much for me. And the setting was so lush. I felt like I was there in ancient Egypt. I just loved it so much. This video is already getting long and I've barely scratched the surface with these books. So I gotta speed it up a little bit. The next book, Dissolution, is going right here. I really liked this one. I was so intimidated going into it. It's a murder mystery set during the Tudor period. And I barely know anything about the Tudor era besides Henry VIII and his wives and very just very little about them as well. But I went into this book just with an open mind and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. There were some things I didn't like. It was a bit gruesome. There were some details of life in a monastery that I really, it made me really uncomfortable, but I loved the mystery and I really, really enjoyed the main character. It was just such a good book. It deals also with the Reformation era. And so the conflict between the Catholic and the Protestant church, it was really, really well done. I really enjoyed it. Just look up trigger warnings for it if you do decide you wanna read it. Then we have The Dress Diary of Mrs. Ann Sykes, which goes here in vain, have I struggled? This one I DNF'd. I just found it very boring, very dry, not for me. The Book Thief, this one, can go here. I really, really enjoyed it. Another book that I went in not knowing much other than the narrator is Death. It was very interesting. It's World War II and it definitely packs an emotional punch. I really, really liked this one. I'll be completely honest, I forget quite a lot about it. I have to go back and read my notes on it, but I do remember I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Legend, I also DNF'd, just not for me. That goes there. Then we have The Night Raven. This one I read in full and liked some parts, but overall I, it wasn't really for me. It's a middle grade mystery. It is translated from Swedish as well, and I'm not sure if that had anything to do with why I didn't really enjoy it all that much. It's very wintry, and honestly the, the tone was quite dark for middle grade, so I didn't really like that. It was interesting. It was okay. We'll just leave it there. My laptop just froze, so I had to play around with it. Hopefully everything is still properly in frame. But anyways, next book. <laughs> the Inspector and Mrs. Jeffries can go right here. How quick come the reasons for approving what we like. I really, really liked this book. It is the first book in a very, very long series by Emily Brightwell. It is Victorian era, murder mystery, just coziness. That's all that it is really. It is the first book in the series, so I didn't have very high expectations going in and that's fine. I enjoyed my time with it. That's all I went in expecting was a fun time. Our main characters are Mrs. Jeffries and she is a housekeeper for another main character, Inspector Witherspoon. And they have such a fun dynamic and basically everyone in Inspector Witherspoon's household kind of helps him solve his mysteries that he's trying to solve. He's not the brightest person and his household is really why he is successful at his job and it's just it's so fun it is so fun i would highly recommend this first book and i actually also read this one which i will actually rank it higher mrs jeffries and the midwinter murders this one's way way down in the series but i read it first i read this one in december and the first book in january but the Midwinter Murders, it was also very, very fun. Not as Christmassy as I was expecting, but it delivered what I was hoping for. So very, very fun series. And I definitely want to read every book in it. <laughs> then we have Naughty and Nice by Reese Bowen. This one is, I think, book five in the Royal Spinous Mystery series. And we'll put that one here. Put it, there we go. Oh, come on, there we go. This one follows the same pattern as the first four books in the series where we have Georgie who is 30 something in line to the throne and she's frequently given tasks by Queen Mary. In this one, Queen Mary sends her to France to retrieve a stolen snuff box and Georgie ends up finding a dead body as usual. So it was fun. I didn't like this one quite as much as the other books in the series, but a fun time. And it's still a series that I am really enjoying and want to continue. Then we have The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest by Melanie Dickerson. I am so sorry to any fans of Melanie Dickerson, but her writing is just not for me. 
I think I would have really liked her as a teenager, but her type of fairy tale retelling is not for me. Then we have The 11th Medal by Brandon Sanderson. This one, it's kind of in between these two tiers. I'll put it here at the bottom. I mean, it's Brandon Sanderson. It's This one is just a very, very short story about Kelsier. It's kind of Kelsier before the first book in the Mistborn series. And it was nice to see kind of his beginnings, but it was kind of boring. I'm gonna just put it here. It was kind of boring. <laughs> the Black Moth by Georgette Hare. This one was so fun. Let's see. I am going to put it here. This one is the first book that Georgette Hare ever wrote. And if you don't know who she is, she was, I think she wrote from like the 20s up until the 70s, I think. She wrote a lot of Regency and Georgian era romances. She wrote some mysteries as well, but this one was her first published novel. And she wrote it for her brother when he was sick. And it's just the most cheesy, swashbuckling Georgian romance. One of the most cheesy romances I've ever read historical romances and even so it was just it was well written I loved her I love her writing I love Georgette Hare's writing I haven't read many of her books but I want to read every single book she's written she just has such wit and even though the characters were really cliche a lot of this book was really cliche it was just the perfect book at the perfect time I loved it <laughs> you know what this one this one goes all the way here at the top I really really liked it Joy to the World by Spurgeon. This was a Advent devotional, an Advent devotional that I loved. I'll put it right there. It was just wonderful. I love Spurgeon. He was just wonderful. I want to read all the sermons I possibly can that are available for the public. I just, he was wonderful. Oh goodness, I'm so sad about this next one. This one, this one I will put here. The writing is wonderful because it's Amanda Dykes. This is Bespoke and it's a very short novella. I love Amanda Dykes. Her novels are some of my favorite books, but this just did not do it for me. I don't know what it was about it. I just, I don't even remember what it was about to be completely honest. The characters in the story obviously did not stick with me if I don't even remember what it was about. I won't put it in the bottom tier just because it's Amanda Dykes. Her writing is wonderful, but I just, I did not care for this one. The Snow Child was an interesting one. This one I think I'm gonna put at the top of the third tier. This one was solemn and it had a lot of beauty to it, but it just wasn't a favorite. It's set in the 20s in Alaska and we have a middle-aged couple, Mabel and Jack, and they've never been able to have children. And this book just really dives into that kind of grieving process of coming to terms with the fact that, you know, you will never be parents and they end up making this snow child and then one day they see a very mysterious girl running around in the woods and i don't want to say anything else but this is magical realism it's historical fiction it's very hard hitting in a way it deals with grief it's it's very interesting i think the themes are themes that i really like to read about but the story itself i just didn't click to. The writing was beautiful. It was very atmospheric. It's like a wintry tapestry. I can see why this book really suits a lot of people's tastes. And like I was saying, some of the themes are like grief and family and the changing seasons. And it is a retelling of a Russian folktale. I forget what it's called, but the author could have gone in many different directions with it. And I think the direction that she went in was interesting, but not my favorite. There was a little bit of language, a couple intimate scenes that I could have done without. Yeah, I just have a lot of mixed feelings for this book. So we'll just leave it where I put it. <laughs> a Royal Christmas. This one was really fun. We will put it up here. Let's put it there. This one is a nonfiction and it just kind of looks at the royal family throughout history and what they did for Christmas. <laughs> it's not the most interesting thing if you're not interested in the royal family. I am, but it still was just a little dry for my taste, but it had a lot of illustrations. It was very, very charming and perfect for the Christmas season. So I'm glad that I read it and I did really, really like it. Oh boy, <laughs> then we have The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. This one, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm gonna put it here. Oh, this is hard, okay, right there. That makes sense to me, okay. I loved this series. I love this series, not past tense. I love this series. I love the Thursday Murder Club series. I loved the first three books. And this one, no, 
this one goes there. This one was so different. It was emotional and it dealt with some really difficult topics that I was not expecting. Some of them I don't like to read about. I'm just not comfortable with it. So again, look up trigger warnings. And I also wasn't the biggest fan of the mystery. It had to do with drug trafficking, not my favorite thing, but it's the characters that make this series for me. I love the four main characters. Richard Osman is a wonderful writer and I think he does plan on continuing the series at some point. So I definitely wanna read on and read all the books that he writes, but this one, it just, it, it got me in a way that I was not prepared for and I didn't enjoy all that much. So although it's a wonderful book and a lovely series and the characters are just amazing, this one just, ugh, I struggled. <laughs> this next one, I don't think I need to say anything. Uh, we're gonna put it here. And then I'm just gonna take this one already. Little Women, favorite book of all time. I read it for the fourth time. I don't need to say anything else. And then Marmee is a retelling of Little Women from Marmee's perspective, but it is epistolary, so all in journal entries. And I loved it. It was quite slow paced and it's very much getting in Marmee's head. So if you're not a fan of getting into one specific character's like mindset and reading their journal entries, basically, you probably wouldn't enjoy it all that much. But I adore Marmee. I adore Little Women. So this book was just perfection for me. Next we have Ariadri and the Legend of the Fire Rose, which is by Christy A. Cole. And if you didn't know, she is a booktuber, so I will have her channel linked below. This was her debut novel and how exciting to write a book and have it published. That is just so, so fun. So this one I am going to put in How Quick Come the Reasons for Approving What We Like. I really, really enjoyed this book. And also taking into consideration that it's a debut, it is very, very impressive. So this one is a fantasy. It is YA fantasy. And we have a girl named Ariadri who ends up separated from her parents in this very creepy forest. And they basically kind of tell her how to get to safety. There are these magical creatures that are reigning terror. And she gets separated from her parents, ends up in this manner where she starts to learn a little bit about her past and about who her parents are. And this manor is technically a school for training young girls in different subjects and also in weaponry and things like that. And as Ariadri is at the school, she along with the other students learn about these different threats that are facing them. And it is just so, so fun. It was very, very engrossing and very whimsical. And it's also perfect for fans of gardens and flowers and all of that. The nature descriptions were beautiful. The descriptions of all the flowers, it was just so, so luscious. There's just so much creativity that's evident while reading this book. The only thing that didn't really work for me, sometimes the dialogue just wasn't my favorite. It felt a little bit stilted. And with the characters also being in their young teens, a lot of the scenes were kind of just saturated in teenage drama, which is not my favorite thing but that's just a personal preference of mine. I think this book is a wonderful YA fantasy and definitely one that I would have adored if I had read it at like 14, 15, but such a fun book. And from what I hear, it is going to be a four book series. So I'm very, very much looking forward to continuing. All right, then we have a lot of Christmas books. So of course, these are all books I read back in December and hopefully I remember enough about them to talk about them. So we have How Winston Delivered Christmas and this one was really, really fun. I don't know where to put it. It's been so long since I read it. Uh, let's put it here. This one is so fun. It's basically about a mouse and he finds this lost letter that was supposed to make its way to Santa, but it never did. So he goes on a journey to bring it to the North Pole. And this book is told in 24 and a half chapters. So it's like an advent book that you read for the 24 days leading up until Christmas. And it was so fun. This one would be so, so fun to read to your kids. I really, really enjoyed it. And the illustrations were also adorable. Then we have Oscar and the Eight Blessings. This one was so, so wonderful. It is a picture book and a few other books here are also picture books, but Oscar and the Eight Blessings is about a refugee, a Jewish refugee from Europe. And he ends up in New York looking for his aunt. All he has is a picture of her and he's trying to find her. As Oscar's trying to find his aunt, he encounters so many different people and different small acts of kindness really encourage him to keep going to keep looking for his aunt 
It was so, so heartwarming. Such a precious picture book. Then we have another little Christmas murder, which I'm going to put here. I did enjoy it. Um, it is a modern classic set around Christmas time. It's an isolated close circle mystery and our main character, her car ends up breaking down. This is set in Yorkshire. So her car ends up breaking down because of a snowstorm. And this young gentleman comes and finds her in the snow and brings her to his uh, aunt and uncle's mansion uh, to stay the night and a suspicious death occurs. And it was fun, not my absolute favorite. I was a little bit confused with the ending, but I thought it was a fun story. Ferris Stays Up for Christmas was another adorable picture book. I loved it so much and will definitely be reading that to my future children. Then we have Dangerous Beauty. This one goes here. Honestly, probably here. This one was interesting. It is Christian Fiction's Contemporary uh, and it's basically about a girl who is saved from human trafficking. And it seems like the only way for her to be saved is for this man who finds her at a gas station trying to flee her captors. He offers to marry her, so it is a marriage of convenience. And that's normally a trope I like, but I just had some personal issues with the way it was done in this book. And the writing wasn't my absolute favorite, but I do think that the author did a great job discussing some really difficult topics and she did it very gracefully. I will give her that. But the issues I had with this book, they're me problems. It's just my personal tastes. It's absolutely nothing against the book itself or the author or anything like that. It's just a me problem. <laughs> then we have Winter Tales and this one was fun. It's a collection of wintry and Christmassy, Christmassy short stories. Not all of them were favorites, but I did write down the standouts. So the stories are Tanuki's Gold, of course, The Nutcracker, but this was a very shortened, abridged children's version of The Nutcracker. Uh, the Poinsettia, The Snow Maiden, The Snow Queen, Rabbit's Gift, and The Twelve Months. This next book is the only one uh, which I will actually read the summary from Goodreads just because I'm gonna have a hard time describing it. But before that, I'm gonna put it right up here. This one made me feel so seen. It was it was just the right book at the right time. It was perfect for the season I was in when I read it. So it says, we aren't always honest about how difficult normal human life is. For the majority of people, sorrow, despair, anxiety, and mental illness are everyday experiences. While we may have made tremendous advancements in therapy and psychiatry, the burden of living still comes down to mundane choices that we each must take, like the daily choice to get out of bed. In this deeply personal essay, Alan Noble considers the unique burden of everyday life in the modern world. Sometimes, he writes, the choice to carry on amid great suffering to simply get out of bed is itself a powerful witness to the goodness of life and of God. I really don't know how to explain this book because it isn't really a self-help book. It is really an essay and it just... I felt so seen. I would highly recommend it. And I would recommend it on audio as well. I listened to the audiobook for it. Then we have Where Snow Angels Go. This one is a very sweet picture book by Maggie O'Farrell. She wrote Hamnet and I was really surprised when I saw that she had also written a picture book. So this one was very whimsical. I wasn't super connected to the story, but very beautiful. The illustrations were gorgeous as well. A beautiful wintry story. Then we have The White Christmas Inn, which this one just was not for me. I tried in vain. Have I struggled? It just was not for me. A contemporary Christmas story. I guess I just need to come to terms with the fact that I am not a contemporary reader. Then we have The Princess Game and The Princess Search. So The Princess Game is the second last book in the Four Kingdoms series by Melanie Sellier or Sellier. I don't know how to say it. But anyways, this one is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and I really, really enjoyed it. I love what the author did with the original story. And then The Princess Search, I I think the reason I struggled with this one is I was feeling a big, big reading slump coming on right around the time that I was reading it and I just needed something else to get me out of that slump. But I pushed through this one and it made me not enjoy it. And I wish I had just temporarily DNF'd it rather than pushing through. I really need to just put my foot down and DNF a book and then come back to it. But I pushed through, didn't really enjoy it. It's not to say it's a bad book, but you know what? I can go up here. <laughs> all these next three books are all gems, absolute gems. I'm gonna put that there, whoops, absolute gems. These are basically picture book retellings of Anne of Green Gables and I am obsessed. I cannot get enough of this series. There are currently five out. I'm waiting for the fifth book to come out in paperback and then there is going to be a sixth book as well. But we have Anne's Kindred Spirits, Anne's Tragical Tea Party, and Anne's School Days. 
The illustration style is just gorgeous. I also think the author did an incredible job of kind of retelling certain scenes from Anne of Green Gables, but for young readers, it's so cozy and so whimsical and oh, I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed. If you love Anne of Green Gables, please read these books. Speaking of all things Ella Montgomery, we have Emily's Quest and Emily Climbs or vice versa. Emily's Quest, this one I will put there and then Emily Climbs we'll put there. Totally just swapped the titles. This one is Emily Climbs, this one is Emily's Quest. Emily Climbs is the second book in the Emily series. I had read the first book twice and I just never continued the series. I'm not going to get into what the Emily series is about but Emily Climbs was a bit of a struggle because of a certain man named Dean who was an utter creep and ruined the book for me but still a great book because it's Ella Montgomery, she's a great writer. I just, it, it was just creepy. He was creepy. I did not like how much he played a part in this story. I am so grateful with how the series ended. So Emily's Quest is definitely better <laughs> in my opinion. I'm actually gonna put it here. I really, really enjoyed it. I love how the author completed this, this trilogy. I love how this ended. It ended the way I was hoping it would but with some twists. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I love where the Dean storyline went. I'll just say that. Then we have Laura's album and this one I really, really liked. I'm gonna put it, hmm, this is hard. I'm probably gonna put it here. I really enjoyed this. As someone who grew up on Little House on the Prairie, like the TV show, and I eventually read the books as well. I love all things Ingalls family. Just the whole vibe of Little House on the Prairie is such such a delight. And this one is basically kind of like a scrapbook in a way, but it's, it's nonfiction. So we're getting insight into Laura's family tree, all the different moves that they made as a family. And I did actually take the book off my shelf just to show one of the pages. So it has like a bunch of different illustrations and it goes into Laura's family history. And we also have pictures of the family members. So we have Ma, Pa, Mary, Laura, Carrie, and Grace. It's perfect for fans of Little House on the Prairie for sure. Then we have The Bell of Belgrave Square. And this one, I, okay, I'm gonna put it here. If my laptop would work, there we go. Oh, there we go. So The Bell of Belgrave Square by Mimi Matthews is the second book in her Bells of London series, which I am really enjoying. I really liked the first book, even though there were aspects of it that I didn't like. This book was not my favorite, which is kind of ironic because the trope, the romance trope is one of my favorites and the characters were just beautifully drawn out. It's set in the Victorian era. It is romance and I love Mimi Matthews. I love her writing. I love how she does historical romance. She's just a wonderful writer. But this one had a bit too much tension. It is not a squeaky clean romance by any means, but there were definitely aspects that I loved. There were nods to The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins and Lady Audley's Secret, and I really, really enjoyed that. It had some gothic elements, which were also fun, but just the romantic tension was too much and too physical for me. But the third book in the series was an absolute delight. I buddy read it with Anne from In Search of Wonder. I'll leave her channel linked below. And we both really, really enjoyed this book. And it was just, it was everything I wanted it to be. It's sort of an enemies to lovers, but in a way that makes sense. It is a second chance romance as well. And I think it was just perfect. The characters were so well drawn out. Their problems and the conflict of the story was very realistic. And I just love, 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 love what Mimi Matthews did with these characters. Anne and Hartford are two of my favorite love interests ever. I just, I loved the book so much. And then we have two more books here, books one and two in a trilogy by Rosanna M. White. We have The Number of Love, which I really, really enjoyed. That goes at the very top of how quick come the reasons for approving what we like. And then on Wings of Devotion, I am going to put here, which I also loved. Whoops, I want that here. So these books are set during World War One. They are the first two books in the trilogy like I was saying and as soon as I finished the first book I ended up ordering the third book and I cannot wait to read it but the first book The Number of Love is about these code breakers and our main character Margot 
She's the sister of one of my favorite characters from another trilogy by this author, I think Shadows Over London. And in this one, she is a code breaker. She is so intelligent. I believe she is on the, spec the autism spectrum and I love how the author explored that aspect of her personality and her character. I felt an instant connection to her as well as her love interest, Drake. I have said before, I am really, really picky with Christian fiction, but I love Rosanna M. White for the most part. There are definitely some books by her that I did absolutely love, but she's definitely a comfort author and I will always wanna read her books. The second book on Wings of Devotion, I loved even more. It's set during the exact same time as the first book and the characters do overlap. So in the second book, we have our main character Arabelle and she, I felt like I was reading about myself reading this book. Obviously there are differences because no character has like this perfect cookie cutter personality that someone can fit exactly into. I'm not saying that, but I just felt such a connection. I felt like I was reading about me. She's 25 years old, she is a nurse. She has a very strong desire to be a mother. Some aspects of her family life felt very relatable. I rarely connect this strongly to a female character. I loved that so much. And she meets a man named Camden who was introduced in the first book and he is just a broken, broken, angry man, but for a good reason. And just getting to know them, it was so beautiful and seeing their relationship develop, I loved this book. They were so, so complex and relatable and so well drawn out. I loved it so, so much. But that is a wrap. Those are the books that I read in the last few months. I am so glad I finally, finally wrapped up December and January, long overdue, <laughs> but here we are. I'm very happy that most of the books are in the first two tiers. That makes me, that makes me very, very happy. It's satisfying to see. And I hope that going forward, I just continue to read great books and I hope you all do too. I don't think that this is going to be the usual setup going forward where I tier rank the books that I've read. It's really fun and I really enjoyed using the Jane Austen quotes, but I don't think this is gonna be a monthly thing that I do. I think going forward, I'm going to try to do mid month wrap ups and then end of month wrap ups just because that decreases the number of books I need to talk about at a time and so I can be a little more rambly. <laughs> I don't know, I am open to whatever. You let me know what your thoughts are if you like this setup or if you want me to do mid-month and end-of-month wrap-ups. I really don't know what I'm gonna do, but we shall see. <laughs> Anyways, thank you to each of you for sticking around, watching this video. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on these books, if you've read any of them. I would love to continue chatting, but that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.